Welcome everyone, I'm Gail Harrison Corvette, and it has been my pleasure to serve as your national president. I call the business, the order of the business meeting, or I call to order the business meeting of the 58th National Conference. Let's first enjoy the Mortarboard Ode by the Mortarboard Singers. Normally at this point in an in-person conference, we would take, we would have a formal roll call to assure all chapters are present. Since we are virtual, your attendance will be noted using Zoom. So please make sure your official chapter delegate is here. If not, you know how to find them. But let's kick this off with a little bit of fun. Brooke, do we have a raffle? We certainly do do. So if this is your first time joining us, which I hope it's not, um, we have been doing raffles throughout the weekend, but you should have received a yellow raffle ticket in your flat pack or your conference pack. Um, go ahead and take that out. That will be your, your winning ticket. So Liv, if you want to do the honors. Yes, hello everyone. All right, let me pick a ticket. So we have 114783. 114783. Anybody has it? Is that anyone's ticket? No one? All right, we'll go on to the next. I'll pull three of them. We have 114905. 114905. No one? All right, I'll pull one more no one? and then we'll move on to a trivia question. I have 114768. One, one, four, seven, six, eight. No one? All right. I will move on to a trivia question. All right, so if you know the answer, type it in the chat and the first we see in the chat will win. How many chartered chapters does Mortar Board have across the country? Ooh. I'll repeat. The question. Oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. We have a lot coming in. Looks like J Did they answer yet, Liv? JC Connor from University of South Alabama. You have got the answer correct. Congratulations. So, how many chapter chapters do we have? 233, sorry, <laughs> you're asking me. 233. Thanks, Olivia and Brooke. Great, Macy, I will slide into. Thank you. Thank you. For our first order of business today, we'd like to acknowledge our award recipients for the year. Kayla Miner, who is halfway through her term as student representative at large, will announce the results of the Collegiate Awards. Thank you, Gail. Today, I am excited to honor the recipients of the Major Chapter and Individual Awards, which were presented at our, at our awards show in mid-June. These awards are on page 11 and 12 of your printed program. 
So first, we will acknowledge those who won the Excellence in Advising Awards, which went to the advisor of the Barbara Cook chapter at Purdue University, Margie Jones, Dr. Perla Myers, the senior advisor of the Judy Lewis Loeb Alcala chapter at the University of San Diego, and Reverend David Wright of the University of Puget Sound. The Starling Prize for Extraordinary Mortarboard Membership was presented to Hannah Bobinger of the Sally Stedman Azalea Chapter at the University of South Alabama and Raji Gruel of the Agathai Chapter at UCLA. The Ruth Wyman Mount Chapter Excellence Award winner was the University of South, South San Diego's J Judy Lewis Logue Alcala Chapter. The Freeman and Fox Most Improved Chapter is the Lux Chapter at Case Western Reserve University. 24 Gold Torch award Awards recognized chapters who were above and beyond, and there were 11 chapters who earned pro Project Excellence Awards as well. The National Council was so impressed with how well so many chapters did to keep up and serve their campuses during the COVID-19 challenge, and we hope that your chapters will set your sights on these top awards. Next, I want to introduce Ginny Birch Solinsky to recap the alumni awards that also were presented in mid-June. Thank you, Kayla. The alumni awards are on page 12 of your printed program, and the alumni honored at the awards show are inspirational, talented, and so deserving. Our Distinguished Lifetime Award was presented to Linda Sorensen, a Purdue alumna, and Betty Swilly of Auburn University. The Alumni Achievement Awards went to Dr. James Hamblin, initiated at Wake Forest University, Mr. Shante Moore, initiated at Kansas State University, and Dr. Jerry Redmond, initiated at the University of Mississippi. We also had two Section Coordinators of the Year who were surprised by the announcement in June. They are Marie Brulinski and Blair Kennedy. Congratulations. Thank you, Kayla and Jenny. I would like our CEO Emerita Jane Hamblin to congratulate our foundation fellowship winners. Thank you, Gail, very much. Um, there are seven Mortarboard Fellows that have been awarded fellowships from the Mortarboard National Foundation this year. They are Raji Gruel from UCLA. Anna Clip from West Virginia University, Ben Shinogel from William Jewell College, and you can see their names on the screen and <clears throat> their graduation or year of initiation, Hannah Bobinger of the University of South Alabama, and you may have noticed that Hannah and Raji are also our Starlington Prize winners, so they, they really doubled down and then there are three more fellows who have been working this conference, either as speakers, SCs, or uh, just general supporters. And they are Lauren Chambliss of the University of Alabama, Jill Kleinkoff of Chapman University, and Kate Gladhart Hayes of uh, the University of Puget Sound. So uh, congratulations to these fellows. They're I'm holding their checks here right now, and so they will go in the mail tomorrow. Terrific. Thank you. Our next order of business is to hear the report of the Conference Committee on Resolutions and Recommendations. I call again on Chair Drake Wyman of Florida State University. Thank you, Gail. Uh, and hello, everybody. As I mentioned, I'm Drake Wyman of uh, Florida State University, the chair of the committee. And we are here to present our report on the resolutions and recommendations uh, we received throughout the weekend. Uh, before we get into that, I'd like to thank the rest of my committee for all their effort. And without further ado, we will jump right into uh, resolution number one. So if Sarah Beth Anderson would like to uh, go ahead and read that. Resolution number 121, a resolution of the Resolutions and Recommendations Committee. Whereas Mortar Board and its members have faced an unprecedented year, and whereas we delegates, officers, members, and advisors have been able to come together 
to engage and learn in the second virtual conference in Mortarboard's history due to concerns for safety of members and delegates held from August 6th to 8th. And whereas the leader of Mortarboard Incorporated and the Mortarboard National Foundation have continued to work diligently to support the operation of the national office, provide a conference experience to us, the delegates and members of collegiate ch chapters. And whereas we delegates, officers, members, and advisors have been able to come together to engage and learn in the second virtual conference in Mortarboard's history. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the resolutions and the recommendations committee and the delegation of the 58th National Conference thank the National Council, the trustees of the Mortarboard National Foundation, and the staff of the National Office. Now, therefore, be it further resolved that delegates individually express their appreciation via email to the national leadership at mortarboard at mortarboard.org. And now our second resolution will be read by Mar Margaret Meyer Henry. Resolution number 221. The COVID-19 pandemic was created unique opportunities for our own chapter and members to interact, connect, and communicate via digital venues. And Mortarboard and its chapters foster its mission statement and ideals through the advanced coordination and impact of its national leadership, student leaders, and chapter leaders. An increased connectedness, solidarity, and support will only lead to the continued success of Mortarboard, the Mortarboard National Foundation, alumni chapters, and collegiate chapters. This level of coordination will help the national organization to work out redundancies and communication to the chapters and affiliates and streamline the overall communication process. Chapters and their leadership will be able to create initiatives and projects in our university within their geographical sections through this increased connectedness. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Resolutions and Recommendations Committee recognizes the ability of the national organization in creating a platform for chapters and leaders to digitally connect throughout every year through a shared platform, namely Slack. The Resolutions and Recon Recommendations Committee recommends the National Council take up discussion and debate over the continued use of Slack and its funding and support. And now for our third resolution, it will be read by Dylan Page. Resolution 321, whereas the Resolutions and Recommendations Committee understands the profound benefits of the United, the Ohio State University's Mabel G. Freeman Chapter's Chapter Action Plan Planning Retreat, and whereas every chapter and its members would benefit from the important initial planning steps that go into crafting a chapter action plan, and whereas strong ideas make stronger chapters and thusly so, strong chapters make a stronger mortar board ink and Mortarboard National Foundation. Whereas the unique timing of the CAP deadline in the Mabel G. Freeman planning retreat incentivizes the start of executive board functions during the course of the summer term and expedites class transitions. And whereas many members of the chapter's general body may not be aware of the importance of chapter action plan, nor the information or steps involved in crafting the document. And whereas chapter action plan being paramount to the success of chapters and national organizations should have the expressed influence and buy-in from all of the membership of a chapter. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Resolutions and Recommendations Committee recognizes the immense impact that such an event will have for the Mabel G. Freeman chapter and its potential expansion into other chapters. Now, therefore, be it further resolved that the Resolutions and Recommendations Committee recommends that the National Council issue guidance and expectations of the first general body meeting of a chapter in each opt octumnal term regarding the CAP process and planning, as well as the committee understands the importance of each chapter taking up like-minded initiatives that will bolster themselves and their membership. And now resolution number 421. Whereas delegates and officers of chapters have appreciated the training and engagement presented to us at this 58th na national leadership conference and have been inspired by the speakers. Now therefore be it resolved that we extend our appreciation to the faculty, keynote speaker Sal Flores, event host David Coleman, Monica Bull, Burr, and Gail Harrison Corvette, session leaders, student members of the Slate, 
introducers, national office members, and now therefore be it further resolved, we thank our section coordinators for their efforts to educate and help us plan for the upcoming year. And now therefore be it further resolved that each delegate, uh, each delegate officer and executive team member identify at least one point of learning from this conference and relate it to the entire chapter at the start of the school year. And this concludes our resolutions section of our report and our recommendations will be read by Vedant Kulkarni. Uh, the recommendations, right? I sorry, you got cut off. Yeah. Yeah. So recommendations. It is recommended that chapter have a minimum of 10 members. Recommendation two. It is recommended that a future conference session be held regarding diversity and inclusion and presented by an alumni member who is a person of color. In addition, it is recommended that a national representative for motor board exist who is from an underrepresented community so that members can see representation. Recommendation three, it is recommended that there are more breaks between conference sessions to prevent burnout. And this concludes the report of the conference resolutions and recommendations committee. Thank you guys so much for your time. On behalf of the National Council and the entire organization, Drake and your committee, thank you so much for your thoughtful resolutions and recommendations. Because the report of the resolutions and recommendations committee came from a committee, it needs no motion, but the chair will enter entertain a second that this body accept the report of the resolution and recommendations committee. You may type your second in the chat and at the first person who does it, who has their full name and chapter listed and who is an official delegate will be the seconder. Vedant Kulkarni, K-State, seconds the motion. Is there any discussion? I'll give you a minute to type the discussion in the chat or unmute yourself and you may speak and everyone turn on your speaker mode so you can see the speaker. Thank you for all of you who seconded it. I think that means that you like this work that the committee has done. Hearing no discussion or seeing nothing on the chat, let me just check with Brooke to make sure that she doesn't see anything I don't see on the chat. Nope, I think we're all good. Okay. Just a lot of seconds. Now we get to vote. So please uh, turn on your camera or use your emoji in your box. All delegates, please raise a virtual hand if you support this recommendation. And just by order of um, the teller committee, how many eligible um, delegates do we have today? I see 47 have raised their hands. Whoops, that went down to 46. How is that possible? Brooke, help me out of what you're seeing. I'm has seeing the motion 49 has nine hands. I believe the motion has passed. 51. All right. Um, we only need a majority. And we need a majority. We clearly have that from those voting. All right, thank you all for your positive votes. The motion passes. Last year, our strategic plan was presented at the business meeting at this conference. It was a one-year plan designed to help us set our sights on transforming our society for the long-term and getting through COVID in the short-term. We have kept working and are ready to reveal a three-year plan our incoming president-elect, Cassandra Lucas, has been leading this initiative, along with Marlisa Rona, Jane Hamblin, as our dream team to get things very succinct and transformative, and also um, members of the National Council and several other members who've been invited to the Strategic Planning Committee. I thank that committee for their work. We've had lots of subcommittees as well, working very hard on this initiative, and I wanna thank all of them for that. So Cass, please 
give us a report of the three-year strategic plan. Thank you, Gail. Um, as Gail said, we uh, initially started this work in January of 2020, um, but pivoted for a one-year strategic plan um, given the challenges with COVID. We regrouped in January 2021 um, and uh, moved to a three-year plan, which we are very excited to show to you today. So you'll see on your, your screen, we um, committed to a vision to be scholars, chosen for leadership, committed to service, and united for equity. We outlined three transformational imperatives to move the society forward across the next three years, identified four goals behind those three transparatives, and then spent quite a bit of time finalizing strategies that you can see all the way in the boxes to the right that identify work we will do across the three years for the strategic plans. So next steps is we'll be identifying measurements of success to uh, ensure that we uh, meet our goals and meet our transformative imperatives across those three years, working on year over year work plans and tactics under each of those strategies. And we look forward to can continuing to provide you information and updates regarding the strategic plan over the year. Importantly, identifying ways that you and your chapter can participate and engage with us in the strategic plan in order to ensure success across the entire organization. Thank you, Cass. And if you are interested in working on any of these areas, please send an email to Mortarboard and we will get you involved because we would like to have lots of participation on making sure that we can achieve this three-year strategic plan. The next order of business is the installation of officers. There has been a spirited campaign going on for student representative at large to serve on national council. Voting opened yesterday at the keynote and yesterday afternoon there was a runoff that vote was connected electronically, as you all know. And on behalf of the delegation, I wanna thank all of the candidates for office. Sarah Beth Anderson from the Mabel G. Freeman chapter at The Ohio State University. Kaylee Blunk, the Crescent chapter at Coe College. Vedant Kulkarni, the Zix chapter at Kansas State University. Margaret Meyer Henry, University of South Dakota's keynote chapter. James North, Ta Delta chapter at the University of Minnesota Duluth. And Dylan Page from the Mabel G. Freeman chapter at The Ohio State University. The outcome of this election has been certified by the Nominating and Credentials Committee, which is chaired by Tamika Lovelace. DEI Chair for the Jane K. State Cap and Gown Chapter of San Diego State. The member elected for this two-year term as student representative at large will serve for two years. And I am pleased to announce that the winning candidate is Margaret Meyer Henry of the University of South Dakota. Please join me in congratulating her with your emojis and your clapping and party hats and whatever. And Margaret, would you like to unmute yourself to acknowledge this outcome with a short acceptance speech? Um, sorry, I'm so, I was so sure I wasn't gonna win, so I'm taking a little back. <laughs> um, thank you all so much. Um, my two-year term, I promise I will uh, give my all and make sure that I can make the largest impact possible on Mortarboard and um, really help us achieve all the goals that we have. And uh, feel free to contact any of me, uh, any of you, please contact me at any time. Um, I'll put uh, my contact information in the chat. Um, thank you guys so much. And I am, I am so deeply honored to have been selected for this opportunity. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Congratulations, Margot. I look forward to serving with you on council as do the rest of council. And you can, if you can see the chat, it's all a buzz with congratulations. At the special national conference this year, three alumni officers were elected to serve on national council by our student delegates. They are 
Dr. Cassandra Lucas, who begins her term as president-elect, Ms. Sharon Martin, who begins her term as secretary treasurer, and Jenny Burt Selinski, who will serve as alumni representative at large for the next two years. Representing the National Foundation as an ex officio member of the National Council is Dr. Barbara Arnold, who will become president of the Board of Trustees later this month. She is a past president of Mortarboard. The National Council recently filled a vacancy on the National Council, also in the position of alumni representative at large. And I also introduce you to Dr. Muhammad Hill, who many of you have already met throughout the weekend and on Hoover, et cetera. Other incumbent members of National Council are Dr. Sarah Nazem, Vice President, and Student Representative at Large, Kayla Miner, who you met earlier. And hopefully you can see her pinned face on the screen this time. I will also serve at, on council, but I am pleased to relinquish national president duties and become the immediate past president on national council. The new president who will be installed today is the 31st national president of our society. Please congratulate Catherine E. Chick. Katie. Before we begin the official ceremony, I wanted to share a short reflection of the great honor I have had I have to serve as your president. In the form of a very short poem, I've entitled The Plight of the Pandemic President. There once was a gal named Pauline who was pleased to be prez in 19. Then poof, a pandemic how do you not panic? My dress will just have to stay clean. We barely hit pause. We perfected the pivoting cause zooms in your PJs can really be riveting. How proud am I of mortarboard's persistence? And yes, even though there was some resistance, all your chapters who proved you could still lead and serve, get all of the kudos you rightly deserve. So pat yourselves on the back for your pivots and patience and join me in Little Rock 22, where we can all play hence. Now a little seriously, I would like to thank the three council members whose terms are ending. Their leadership has been stellar. First, David Whitman has served on the National Council for six years and before that as section coordinator and advisor to his chapter. He is a leader in a couple of national engineering societies and is an emerita professor of engineering at the University of Wyoming, where he became an honorary uh, mortar, uh, member of Mortar Board. Dave, would you like to speak? Sure, Gail, thanks very much. Um, yeah, the. I became involved with uh, Mortarboard in 1993. So these 28 years have flown by um, and lots of highlights uh, that will always stick with me. So I appreciate everybody uh, learned so much over this time from everyone and you're in good hands with your future leadership. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Brendan Wall is our student representative, representative at large. Initiated at Illinois State, he first came onto the national scene as press chapter president who was helping with our strategic plan. He received the Starlington Prize last year. He is a doctoral student in chemistry at Iowa State University. Brendan's service on the National Council has been admirable. You set an example for all of us, Brendan, and even though this chapter in your mortarboard life is ending, your service to mortarboard will continue very shortly, I am sure. Thanks, Gail. Brandon. I had a great time uh, with my term as student representative. I'm excited to welcome Margaret to take over my position. Um, I know you'll do fantastic. Um, to all the other students, um, I would say try to get involved with mortarboard as soon as you can after you're done with your chapter. Um, and you go back to your chapters. Uh, there's plenty to do. 
and uh, we welcome you into enthusiastic service to Mortarboard. So thank you so much, everyone. I had a great, great time. I will surely miss my time with uh, National Council. Thank you, Mortarboard. As a, um, this is my second time on National Council, just FYI, you're not done. And finally, our ex officio member, president of the Mortarboard National Foundation, Dr. Marty Starling. Dr. Starling received Mortarboard's Alumni Achievement Award in 2003. Then she was a volunteer fundraiser and founder of the Discovery Space in State College, Pennsylvania. Marty returned the favor of the award with a contribution to the Mortarboard National Foundation. And before she knew it, she began serving on the foundation's board of trustees. She left the board as a trustee in 2011 when she was elected to the national presidency of Mortarboard. And she was national president from 2013 to 2015. She was the first to hold the role of immediate past president on the national council. When she left the council in 2017, she returned as an elected foundation trustee and became president of that board. She has served the National Foundation for 16 years and she is rolling off the board as she is term limited. So her role with the National Council as ex officio member must end as well. Marty has founded an endowment, the Francis Aker Lewis Fund, and another fund is named for her, the Starlington Fund. With Captain Sally Watlington, Marty led us to secure $1.4 million in donations to the Foundation Centennial Campaign that ended in 2018. Marty, thank you for your long service to Mortarboard Inc. and the Mortarboard National Foundation. Would you like to unmute yourself and say a few words? Thank you, Jane. I, I mean, Gail, I'm sorry. Um, it has been a labor of love. I grew up with Mortboard Board because my mother was the president of her chapter at Kansas State. And there was an expectation that I had to follow and make sure that she was proud of my service at Kansas State. And I was thrilled that I was initiated with her pen when I joined Mortboard Board and spent 44 years in, at Penn State and enjoyed that experience. And now I'm living in Minnesota to be near my daughter. And um, this being the president and chair of the fundraising committee was a thrill for me that we could show the, the mortar board members the success that we could have to really support more board uh, programming with the support that everybody wanted to give during the Centennial Campaign. We really appreciated all of our alums across the country to contribute to that and to really say, yes, Mortarboard was really the premier honor society uh, nationally. And I was thrilled to be a part of that. Well, we've been thrilled and blessed with your presence and please take a look at the chat for the outpouring of love and support. You have many fans, Marty, and we look forward to seeing you at alumni events going forward. I hope to be and, there. <laughs> and one last departure from Mortarboard's leadership that we must recognize today, and we are thrilled to do so. Jane Hamblin has served as our executive director and chief executive officer for 12 years. Please enjoy these tributes to her. Jane has had a passion for mortarboard forever. She has lived the life. She even started out in elementary school, skipping a couple of grades, so her scholarship is amazing. Uh, her service is beyond compare. If you are an individual who needs help or an organization, she is always there to lend not one hand, but two. But it's her leadership I wanna talk about today. You see, I went out to dinner with Jane and my father-in-law, and as I walked out to the car afterwards, I thought, oh my goodness, I believe I've just become an interim SC for Mortarboard. It was a wonderful experience. She created beautiful Mortarboard memories for me. And I think she's probably done the same thing for many people in Mortarboard, using that skill to recruit, using the skill to lead, 
Jane, thank you for sharing your passion for mortarboard with all of us. Jane, what an amazing legacy. You have done so much for so many people for such a long time. I feel touched and honored that I first met you at Purdue University where you were helping various students on a number of programs and concerns and um, you were such a leader and then you just continued that as the executive director of Motorboard. And Jane, I just find that you have a resilience, a fortitude, you are so open to others' feedback because you care about serving a higher purpose. And it's just been my joy to watch you over these years and to participate more deeply with Mortarboard. Jane, I think you're a phenomenal human being. I'm so glad to call you a friend and thank you for all you've done through Mortarboard at Purdue University and well beyond. Take care. Hi, Jane. What an honor it is to contribute a video to commemorate your retirement from Mortarboard. I can vividly remember walking into the Dean of Students office at Purdue University many years ago now to find you there enthusiastic and ready to mentor me, sometimes in ways in which you didn't even realize you were mentoring me at the time. Later, when I was tapped into Mortarboard and elected chapter president, I got to work with you on a very regular basis. What a treat it has been to learn from you. Jane, you know how to develop leaders. You build them up and empower them. You teach them accountability and you do it all with patience and a genuine nurturing spirit. So many organizations have benefited from your involvement with them. So many individuals have benefited from your involvement in their lives. On behalf of all of them, and especially on behalf of myself, I want to express my appreciation. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your hard work. Now, go and enjoy your retirement and know that we will all miss you, but that we will all still see you around. I was initiated into the Barbara Cook chapter at Purdue University in 1997. And that really began my affinity and love for mortarboard. Prior to that though, I actually met Jane Hamlin when we knew her as Dean H as an undergraduate student at Purdue. My first encounter with Jane was at the Emily Mozzie Vogel Sophomore Leadership Development Conference in 1995. I remember Jane being there in her associate dean role. And I also recall her, I think she had a bad perm as well as these amazing neon pattern pajama pants. It was definitely a unique look. Um, but all things aside, getting to know Jane was a huge part of my undergraduate experience and really encouraged me to consider higher education as a career. Fast forward several years through Jane's support of my master's degree and first professional positions, I had the opportunity serving as a national leader with Mortarboard to be on the search committee for an executive director. I can remember serving with Katie Chick and Jane Beyer and saying, this is the person that we need to hire. This is the person who will steer Mortarboard and keep us going. As we went forward and hired Jane, she really took Mortarboard to the next level in terms of professionalism. She loved her style guide where we differ on our opinions of the Oxford comma, but that's okay. Um, but what she really did is show her love for mortarboard in advancing the society and especially advancing the status of women in all areas. Jane, congratulations on your retirement from the executive director position. Uh, I was the uh, national president at the time that mortarboard hired Jane. So I worked very, very closely with her on her offer and uh, getting her started. Uh, I had just taken over as uh, as national president, and uh, one of my fondest memories of Jane is really the conversations that we had on a weekly basis to uh, talk about mortarboard and think about the uh, the future of the organization. We started a uh, strategic planning process with the organization and started to be, to be thinking a lot about the uh, centennial in uh, 2018. So this was uh, about nine years before that. Um, Jane, I, I always appreciated your, your leadership, uh, your mentorship, and your support with the, uh, the roles that I had in, in Mortarboard. And thank you for everything that you have done for this organization. 
I just want to take a moment to express my gratitude to Jane for her outstanding leadership uh, and, and really to thank her for all that she's done for Mortarboard. Um, what I really appreciate about Jane uh, is her knowledge of our society. Um, when she first started as, as executive director, she knew a lot about Mortarboard, of course, but she really took the time to learn about our policies and our practices and about our people and about our wide array of chapters across the country. And so she was always able to be a tremendous resource to us as national leaders. And I've always really appreciated that. And then another thing that I think is is phenomenal about Jane's leadership is her passion for mortarboard um, and and everything she did for mortarboard was grounded in that passion and so I'm really grateful uh, for all of her contributions and I wish her the best of luck in the future thanks so much Jane I am so honored to be part of this tribute to you Jane I'm so happy for you you have been wonderful for mortarboard have lots of memories I loved it when I came to Columbus and got to stay at your home. That was really nice. We drank a little wine, we went to Jenny's, and you took me to the rec center at Ohio State, and we got on a treadmill and watched a movie. Never been on a treadmill that long in my life, and I didn't think we are ever gonna get to the office, but we got there on time because you start your day early. And then you came to Alabama and we got to host you, and that was wonderful. We loved introducing you to all the mortar boarders around here at the University of Alabama. But my most favorite memory will have to be when you broke the rules when you let me know that the University of Alabama chapter was winning the Ruth Winermount Award. I was not coming that year because my husband was in hospice, but you knew how important it would be for me to be there, how I would feel about it. And Martha and Glenda and I drove up one day to Indianapolis for that one night for the banquet. And then we turned around and came home the next day. Thank you for that. It's one of the best things of my life in you're the reason that I got to be there. You're gonna rock retirement and love it. Congratulations. Jane, what can I say? For almost 30 years, you have been a mentor, a colleague, and a friend. You taught me how to run an effective meeting, how to work collaboratively with other leaders, and how to always accept opportunities that come my way. More importantly, you've brought such joy and friendship to my life. Whether it's getting you to go to Breakfast Club at Purdue, or drinking Liney's by the Lake, or you simply listening to my latest work crisis, you always know how to make me laugh, provide me with much needed guidance, and help me see things in a new perspective. You've been such an important part of my life, and I know that you will continue to be so. Thank you for everything that you have done for Mortarboard, and I look forward to our continued adventures together. Jane, congratulations on your retirement. It is something to be celebrated. I am so happy that I've had the chance to work with you since you first interviewed um, to be our executive director many years ago. It was my first big national leadership opportunity to be on that search committee um, and introduced me to what it takes to be a national leader in mortar board. I've been with you on a journey as a section coordinator, as um, a strategic plan keeper um, with you, me and Bridget, many hours on that Excel spreadsheet, trying to keep our strategic plan um, alive and well. Um, to getting a chance to become a charter member of the MBAA and an ambassador for that program, um, being on national council together. And I just want to thank you for your encouragement um, and support over the years. I would not be where I am today as president-elect stepping into the president role uh, this weekend at conference without your encouragement, without your support. Um, and I do appreciate how often when you see a spark in someone, you nudge us and push us to um, take that next step and to light the world on fire. Enjoy your retirement. I know we'll keep in touch and I wish you the best. Hi, Jane. I'm really glad that we had this opportunity to share a memory when we were working together. It all started when the Centennial Campaign was completed and we were recognizing major donors when it was announced that our colleagues had honored Sally Wadlington and me with a $10,000 endowment. We were given the privilege of identifying how the annual distribution would be. And we were a little puzzled at that point what that might be when I ask you what you had in mind, you always wanted to do something but never had the money to do it. And you very calmly said to me, 
are you remember alums get recognition with the alumni awards chapters get recognition with chapter awards but there is no award for an individual collegiate member for extraordinary achievement that really resonated with sally <clears throat> with sally and me and so the starlington prize was created we are very pleased to have been a part of this and know that this award that the three of us work together to develop is now available for up to four students for the rest of Mortarboard's history. When Marty Starling first asked me to become president of Mortarboard, one of my first questions was, will Jane Hamlin still be around? Because not only did Jane put together this amazing history of Mortarboard for our centennial, but she is a walking treasure trove of the history of Mortarboard. She could recount conversations that happened even before her tenure as our chief executive. And it has been this amazing grasp of our history, of our precedent, and of the way we should work that really has helped Mortarboard survive and thrive during these challenging times where we've had to be so creative and resilient. I really appreciate the collaboration with Jane, I appreciate her dedication and love for Mortarboard, and I appreciate her amazingly strong work ethic to do good for our organization that will put us in a great position for our next century. Thank you, Jane. It's my very great honor and pleasure to recognize Jane Hamlet for her work and leadership in conducting the Foundation's Centennial Campaign, leading up to the celebration of 100 years celebrated in 2018. By the time of the celebration in 2018, we had reached $1.4 million in endowed funds. By the end of 2020, the number of endowment funds had grown significantly, starting with 11 funds valued at $855,000 and growing to 51 funds with a value of $2.5 million at the end of 2020. In April of 2021, the investment portfolio exceeded $3 million for the first time in our history. None of this would have happened without a great deal of work by Jane and her staff. It was truly a team effort which has helped launch Mortarboard into its second century. My very first experience meeting Jane uh, was my very first day on the job as an advisor and it was at the 100th anniversary celebration at the Mortarboard National Conference. And Right from the start, Jane made me feel welcome. Uh, she set the bar incredibly high for the organization and for my involvement in the organization. And from that day, I knew that it was gonna be special to be part of Mortarboard. Jane is always willing to take an email, to take a phone call. She never made me feel like I was a bother. She was always gracious, thankful. Um, she, she's a person who shows gratitude in a way that is second to none. Uh, she also has a gift for connecting people's talents with the needs of the organization, as I myself experienced um, through her invitation to be part of LEAD um, and, and saw her do countless times and times again with um, varying roles throughout the organization. Jane, thank you. Thank you for your service to Mortarboard. Thank you for serving as a mentor to me and best of luck as you enter um, all that is next for you. Thank you, Jane. I recall our first meeting in the Mortarboard offices in Columbus when you were a candidate for the role of executive director and I had the honor to serve as the chairperson for the search committee that brought you into Mortarboard. I needed to quickly adapt to becoming known as Jane B since deservedly from day one, you became the main Jane. In the ensuing years serving on the National Council, I came to quickly appreciate your many leadership qualities, amongst them your diligence, your attention to detail, and above all else, your passion and commitment for Mortarboard. It was abundantly clear we had made the right choice in our decision to bring you on to lead Mortarboard through a dozen years of growth and transition. I recall many, many council meetings and national conferences with you at the helm, but perhaps none stands out as much as the year in which you and your team had to quickly pivot and within a little more than a day, move the conference from one hotel location to another. In doing so, you definitely demonstrated leadership in a near crisis situation. 
As you head toward retirement and the next chapter of your life, I undoubtedly join with so many others to wish you nothing but the best in whatever lies ahead. It goes without saying that I hope we can stay in touch. And again, thank you for a job well done. Congratulations on your retirement, Jane. We've been friends for such a long time now. Could it really be over 40 years? Oh, for dumb, it really has been that long. For those of you who haven't known Jane for quite that long, please know that Mortarboard has been a vital part of her life for 48 years since her initiation at Purdue. And because it is a part of her life, it becomes a part of yours. To know Jane is to know about Mortarboard. Very rare are the people who have invested so freely and so lovingly in Mortarboard. While Mortarboard will continue to be a vital part of your life, Jane, you can now spend more time at the farm, more time on the beach, and more time at the lake. And your buddy Alan is really looking forward to hanging out with you. Thank you for your dedication to Mortarboard, your passion for excellence, and for helping all of us learn how to have some fun while working hard. Congratulations. I can't say enough how much I've learned from Jane. She's been a friend, a mentor, that person you could call any time of the day and say, hey, I need help. Um, you know, one of the things with Jane though, she always tells me that I drink too much Diet Coke. Um, so for today, Jane, I'm gonna just say um, toast to you. Jane prefers red. I'm more of a Chardonnay person myself, but Jane and I have shared many glasses of wine together and contemplated the future. But most importantly, I just want to wish Jane the best in her retirement. I do need to add that in 2013, when Julie Edelman received the Alumni Achievement Award and coordinated a tribute to Jane, it took a while for Jane to forgive us. I'm not sure if she really ever did. So I'm hoping this video is well received and she knows how much we all love her and are proud to be in her fan club. Thanks, Jane, for your dedication and commitment to Mortarboard. Jane, if you could let go of your virtual background to commemorate. You there? Hang on. Hang okay, on. there we go. Choose virtual background. So just choose none. Should I be scared? No. I'm not scary. <laughs> but someone has entered your office. You may hear Kirsten's voice. And we yeah. want to see both of you. There we go. Ooh. To commemorate how you have led our way for the past 12 years. Many donations have been made to the Hamblin Endowment Fund in your honor. And we present this compass to you. It reads... Thank you for guiding the way into our second century. And this might even come in handy as you travel in your spiffy vintage trailer during your retirement. Is it possible to have Jane Hamblin be speechless? I think not. We'd love a few words from you, Jane. How do you do? That's really cool. It's not a makeup compact. I'm really sure of that. Oh, it's oh, a yeah. compass. Oh, it's, a it's a compass because of Aren't your you leadership. Guys clever. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, wow. What a, that's beautiful. Can I hold it up and have you see it? Yes, I think we even have a slide of it. Oh, we do? Of course we do. Because, of course, we're prepared. Uh, <clears throat> so I get to talk for a minute, um, right? Yes. And I thank you so much. I'm, when people say they are blown away by something, I've, and I've said that before, I never really knew what that meant until right now. Your, your labors in uh, doing this uh, are astonishing. Thank you. Um, Kirsten did tell me that I could say something, but that I could not talk about every year of my life. I, I am gonna take the time and the, uh, take some a privilege of telling you a little story about when I was younger, I promise it's not every year of my life, but I, I wanna thank you first of all for doing this for me and for having this mortarboard mischief. It's truly amazing. 
when I was growing up in the small town of Knox, Indiana, I lived in a four square type house on Main Street, just eight doors from the former high school building that was the junior high school by the time I was a little girl. And the original three-story building had been uh, added onto with a gymnasium that was used for gym class and school plays. It was a big brick building. And my dad was the junior high school principal. And my mom taught there ninth grade English. My brother went there too, he's younger than me. Uh, the junior high school was home to the seventh grade, the eighth grade and the ninth grade. And when I, a lot of my life revolved around that building because dad would go into work sometimes when school was not on and I would get to go with him and play in the gym or tape up books so that they would be ready for the next term because you recycled textbooks back then. Some people remember doing that. And sometimes when it was really cold at night, we couldn't let the furnace uh, burned down so dad and I would bundle up and go over and shovel coal into the furnace so that the building wouldn't freeze. And I considered it my play place as did a number of other kids on over the summer and on weekends. Once I drove, uh, was riding my bike around to the side of the building that nobody went to because there was this alcove between where the new building and the old building were put together. It was big space with big high brick walls on either side, put together by mortar, I'm realizing. And um, I, the workers that summer had tarred the gymnasium roof and they just dropped all the buckets down in this space that was my space, big, covered with weeds and the, the warm black oozing, nearly empty tar buckets were just really enticing to me. And the bricks were right there and it was just a beautiful canvas. So I took this a stick and I got tar and I started to write on the bricks as high as the bricks were. My whole life story, Jane Ann Hamlin, 502 South Main Street, Knox, Indiana, as if you know, if there'd be any other person there. My birth date, uh, Mr. Slavin's sixth grade. And I thought, I have really made my mark here and it's my secret. And I just thought no one else will know. And I rode my bike away. I was real happy about having done that. And then the next day on Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, rather, when I got home from the elementary school, my dad was waiting for me in the driveway. He had come home from the junior high school and he was not happy because when he'd gone to school that morning, Rollin Whiting, the seventh grade math teacher, motioned for him to come into his classroom. And without a word, Mr. Whiting walked dad back to the back of the room where the windows overlooked what I thought was my secret alcove outside the building. And I'm sure Mr. Whiting enjoyed very much watching my dad's face as he observed my supposedly secret spot and saw his daughter's whole life, Jane N. Hamlin, Mr. Slavin, sixth grade, Palmer School, 502 South Main Street, May 15th, my birthday, written on the bricks. So dad, walked me to the garage, he got a handle from the gas, put the gas in the tank in a, in a bucket, gave me a rag and said, get down there and try and get it off. And so I walked down to the junior high school <laughs> and scrubbed and scrubbed with gasoline running down my elbow. And it was really good tar apparently and brick is pretty porous and I got off what I could, but, um, it, it was still there when I went to seventh grade in the school and went to math class in Mr. Whiting's math class the next year. And it was still there when I graduated high school and college. And it was still there when they tore the building down. In fact, I have some of those bricks that still have faint tar marks on them. So 
I think about that experience often because I thought I was making my mark secretly where no one could see and yet I had made it in the wrong place and then unsuccessfully had to try and rub it out. And what I learned that is instead of, instead of tar, excellence is the best ink with which to make your mark, to use a quote that you've heard before, I'm sure. Excellence is the ink with which to make your mark. So over time, after my sixth grade boo-boo, I have tried to make an excellent mark in the workplace, not in secret, and in the right place so that it didn't need to be rubbed out. And over time, I've had some successes and some failures in the workplace. Some of those failures were because I wasn't up to the challenge. And I think some of them were because of bias or unfairness. And I've learned a lot from all of those things. Uh, but I do like to work. Work is who, what defines me, I think. And I think about my mother's ye little yellow card sometimes. She has these sayings she typed on yellow card stock. And one of them is coming to work doesn't hurt. It's the long wait to go home. And I can say for certain that uh, I really am not one of those people, although I've known some. And I can also say for certain that no one in the national office and the staff now who have put together this tribute uh, are those types of people. I can say thank you from the bottom of, of my heart for working hard every day and not just waiting to go home. Excellence is really the ink with which you make your mark. So um, I, as I retire, I hope that my mark of excellence at mortarboard will, um, will stand the test of time. I know there are things that haven't always been excellent, but I, I really feel like we did do some good. To all of you new mortarboards who are learning what it means to be a member, I hope you will make your mark on mortarboard and on your campus through mortarboard. Uh, if you find that mortarboard is not as much of a thing on your campus as it should be, don't fret, to use Brooks' words. Just realize that your campus might have lost its way when it comes to honor societies in general and mortarboard in particular. And so I hope you take some of the passion and experience and enthusiasm that you received this weekend uh, from your national leaders and speakers and SCs and find the right champions on your campus to help your chapters and you make a mark. And that it's not in a secret place that no one will find or that they will be surprised by the next morning, that it's in the right place. To my friends in mortarboard, again, I say thanks. I am uncomfortable with the tribute and I thought I would slip out the side door, but Gail is very persistent and I don't know quite what to say. Um, I do think it is, however, important always to say thank you. And I appreciate that you have recognized me and said thank you. And to chapter leaders and new members, again, I say, if you ever want your chapter to get noticed on campus, one of the quickest ways to do that is to start saying thank you on campus to the clerical staff, the, thank the faculty, thank the Dean of Students, and other programming will follow from there. You've and made for this video, really so now, Jane, you probably didn't see the ending credits of the video, but this video was so professionally produced by two former students of yours, Brian Lacerdo and Brandon Nichols. And I know we, there were lots of um, comments in the chat of how professionally it was really done. and. Oh, thank you for telling me and that. I didn't see it. We will give you the link to the Dropbox so you can see the little treadmill uh, icon that is part of their thank you for producing this video. Oh, thank Our, you. 
Are we so, ready for the installation of officers? I want to read the torch. Okay. I? Yes. I don't know where you went. There, there you are. Okay. Go so, ahead, Jane. I want to talk about my TAR experience one more time. I know Gail wants to keep this on time, and I appreciate that. Well, we don't have another session until 1.30, and so, based on the resolution and recommendations committee, we'll, you will get a little break, but it won't be the half hour break you thought, because we had to keep this little time slot a, tr a, a um, surprise from Jane. So back to my TAR experience. The one thing that has always bothered me is that I had the gall to deface this building that I really loved. The building didn't belong to me, it belonged to everyone in the town. And the same is true with mortarboard. And I have always tried to remember that it is not my mortarboard, it's all of our mortarboard, it's your mortarboard. And I hope you feel that new members as well as continuing members today, it is your mortarboard. And it's mortarboard that is what is important and it's our purpose that guides us. And so um, I would like to take the privilege to uh, read the torch before the installation. The torch is an anonymous poem written um, sometime in the 19th, early 19th century. The God of great endeavor gave me a torch to bear. I lifted it high above me in the dark and murky air and straight away with loud hosannas, the crowd proclaimed its light and followed me as I carried my torch through the starless night till drunk with the people's praises and mad with vanity, I forgot twas the torch that they followed and fancied they'd followed me. Then slowly, my arm grew weary, upholding the shining load, and my tired feet went stumbling over the dusty road, and I fell with the torch beneath me. In a moment, the light was out, when lo, from the throng, a stripling sprang forth with a mighty shout, caught up the torch as it smoldered, and lifted it high and tall, till fanned by the winds of heaven, it fired the souls of all. As I lay in the darkness, the feet of the trampling crowd passed over and far beyond me, its paeans proclaiming aloud, and I learned in the deepening twilight the glorious verity. Tis the torch that the people follow, whoever the bearer may be. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Jane. Now it is time, am I muted? No, now it is time to install our new National Council. All National Council members, please unmute your mics and our facilitator will pin you so everyone can see you. National Council members who will be serving in 21-22, you are about to be installed before the entire delegation. When I call on you, please answer, I will. As a member of the National Council, will you steward the daily business of the society, remembering always our ideals of scholarship, leadership, and service? And will you endeavor to make Mortarboard relevant to its diverse membership and its chapters during the upcoming year? Board of Trustees President, Dr. Arnold, please respond. Please, un are you unmuted? Okay, hopefully everyone heard that. Alumni Representative at Large, Dr. Hill. I will. Alumni Representative at Large, Ms. Birch Swolinski. I will. Student Representative at Large, Ms. Minor. I will. Student Representative at Large, Ms. Meyer Henry. I will. Secretary Treasurer, Ms. Martin. I will. Vice President, Dr. Nazem. I will. President elect, Dr. Lucas. I will. And National President, Ms. Chick. I will. 
welcome. We on the National Council now turn to you, officers and advisors of mortar board chapters, showing a reaction in your emoji on your screen, will you answer the following questions? Having been entrusted with the leadership of your chapter, will you join the National Council in serving mortar board to the best of your ability in the upcoming year? I even, I lots of thumbs up checks and one heart emoji. I love the heart emoji. Any mortar board emojis out there? Excellent. Thank you for taking this pledge. We have very high aspirations for you in the year ahead. Thank you for all you do. You are our newest volunteers, our newest leaders. We are delighted to be connected with you and look forward to the amazing contributions that you will be making to the, your, our society for the rest of your life. I am delighted to pass the gavel to Katie Chick. On my screen, she is underneath me. So I'm gonna pass the gavel and she's gonna take it from above. I don't know if that works in your screen. Katie is one of the youngest national presidents in the modern history of mortar board. She is a graduate of Hood College's Keystone chapter where she was president. She has been a member of the CAB, a section coordinator, a keeper of the strategic plan, a member of several committees, and she has served on the National Council as alumni representative at large and vice president before being elected president-elect. Congratulations, Katie. Thank you, Gail. Today, I'm deeply humbled and grateful to each person who has been part of my mortar board journey. I've been so blessed over the years with people in my life who have supported my involvement in mortar board and encouraged me to lean into opportunities to serve our society at the national level. For the past 15 years, mortar board has been an integral part of my life. This is my 16th national conference, and each one of them has brought new friendships, ideas, and inspiration. Serving as a leader in mortar board has shaped my values, my approach to leadership, and who I am as a person. This started during my time as the president of my chapter at Hood College. Having the privilege to lead alongside other leaders on my campus made me show up differently to meetings and events, knowing that every single person in my chapter was qualified to sit in my seat. Rather than that scaring me, it empowered me to think differently about the work that we could accomplish together if we all played our part. That also inspired me to come back to conference as a student advisor, and then when new opportunities came up to say yes. I said yes to committees and big volunteer roles like becoming a section coordinator and joining National Council. Through it all, I picked up so many skills that I brought back to my work in HR and found ways to bring my professional skills back to mortar board. Stepping into the role of national president is such an honor, especially at this pivotal moment for mortar board. At my first conference, longtime executive director Diane Selby was retiring. Then I served on the executive director search committee that selected our now retiring chief executive, Jane Hamblin. During my first year as a section coordinator, I worked with Kirsten Box, who was serving as the advisor at the University of Maryland chapter. And this past year, I got to chair the search committee that ultimately hired her as our newest executive director. So many things in my life seem to have come full circle for this moment, which I trust as I step into this new role with mortar board. So with a few nerves and shaky voice, but with more feelings of excitement, confidence, and support, I'm proud to begin my journey as your national president. Yesterday, we heard from Saul Flores that in an unexpected place, he discovered a community that he was meant to serve. For me, that harkened back to our 2018 centennial keynote when Brian Stevenson, the founder of the Equal Justice Initiative, challenged each of us to get proximate to people whose lived experiences were different from our own, to really look up and see the world as others experience it. And yesterday, I heard that same message in my dear friend Sara Nazem's session about empathetic leadership. I am convinced that that is the difference maker for our organization. We come from all backgrounds, disciplines, majors, fields of study, but the things we have in common is a demonstrated commitment to scholarship, leadership, service, and equity. As we go into this year, I challenge each of us to ask ourselves, what communities are we meant to serve? Have we found them yet? 
have we gotten proximate? I challenge each of us to push ourselves in this area and to seek out the communities that need us the most and that hearken back to our ideals of scholarship, leadership, service, and equity. I commit to you that I will do the same, both personally and as national president of Water Board. I will seek out ways to deepen how we as a national organization can continue to live our values as a society at large. And so I say let's mark today, August 8th, 2021, as the day that each member of Mortar Board said yes to doing our part to create a more inclusive, equitable world, one community at a time. The communities we serve will be different, but if we are all intentional and focused, I do believe that Mortar Board members can change the world. Brian Stevenson ended his address in 2018 saying that he was excited for what each of us will do, and I share his excitement today. I'm excited for our collegiate members to continue those relationships you forged this weekend and to bring back those lessons learned to your local chapters. I'm excited to hear about the amazing work you will do on your campus at this important moment in higher education, like Dave Coleman said at the opening ceremony. I'm excited for our alumni to go back into the world with a renewed passion for Mortarboard and for what we can all do as lifelong members of this amazing organization. And I'm excited as your national president to do my best to carry on the legacy of those who came before me and to make those who will come after me proud of the work we will do in the next two years together. Thank you all for your support. I had to stop reading the chat at one point because um, I was getting emotional. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm a bit of an emotional person. Um, but this does mean that our business has come to an end. There are still two more important sessions at conference, um, but we want to give you a break. However, we do need an official um, motion to adjourn this business meeting. Does anyone want to make that motion? Madam uh, President, this yes. is Marty Starling, Kansas State University, 1962, and I move we adjourn the National Council meeting. Thank you, Marty. I also see that Linda Yoder did move to adjourn as well. And we have some seconds in the chat. So I think everyone understands the process. Thank you so much. It has been moved and seconded that this business meeting will be adjourned. And this is not debatable. All in favor of our voting delegation, please signify this by raising your virtual hand. Please note that our Capstone Leadership Lecture begins the bot at the bottom of the hour. But before we break, can we play Thy Ideals by the Mortarboard Singers? Thy ideals, my sigma alpha, we are ever striving toward. As we seek to live thy motto in the bonds of Mortarboard, as to you whom we had chosen in the Thank you. We'll see you at the bottom of the hour.